Oh, Skyler, I'm back from vacation. You ready for your dick twisting? Yeah. I got you another game to play. If I play it, will you set me free? Nope. All your views are paying my bills. I've never seen a dime of that money. <laughs> well, don't f***ing suck then. You are a terrible person. Well, tell that to all the mommy milkers I laid eyes on this weekend. Weren't you at a family reunion? No. Well, I guess I'm not tied up anymore, so there's that. Well, I got this little bad boy. So if you run, you won't get very far. I bet I can outrun you. Just for that comment, I'm gonna shave your head. No way. I like my hair. I like being a dick. We always can't get what we want. Resident Evil. Love it or hate it, it's held as the king of survival horror games. And also the goofy laughing stock of video games. It's Forrest. Oh my god. It's awful. In the 90s, it slapped hard. But then Capcom did what everyone does with a popular franchise. They milked those tits raw. Between 1996 and 2002, there were nine Resident Evil games released. Nine in only six years. If my math is correct, that's more than one a year. To put that into perspective, Mario 64 was released in 1996 and Mario Sunshine in 2002. Same amount of time in between, but only two games instead of nine. Granted, within those nine, there are a couple Resident Evil spin-offs and one remake in that time span. But that is still a significant amount of games in six years. Around the 2000s, Resident Evil was in a weird state and needed some changes and updates for modern gaming at the time. In 2002, they released Resident Evil Remake for the GameCube, which is amazing and may be the greatest remake ever made. We did a video on that one, check it out. In that same year, they released Resident Evil Zero. I know I'm no expert in marketing and producing video games, but I feel like you need to give some breathing room in between releases. You don't want to overload your fans, and you also want to build up the hype around your product, as well as trying to innovate in between each release. But what the hell do I know? Call of Duty drops every year and people are still buying it, as well as sports games that never change. Resident Evil Evil Zero was originally developed for the N64, but limitations. So it was pushed to the GameCube. Upon release, it received mixed reviews, but was generally positive and has sold over 4 million copies across all platforms. But Resident Evil Zero definitely isn't the most well-loved in the series and even gets dunked on by many Resident Evil fans. Well, that's why I'm here. Let's find out and answer the question of why does everyone hate Resident Evil Zero? Resident Evil Zero. Resident Evil Zero is a prequel to the original Resident Evil that follows Rebecca Chambers and Billy Cohen. Capcom made a couple changes to the game mechanics in this title to spice up the overall gameplay. A big one being that it's a two character system where you switch back and forth between Billy and Rebecca to solve puzzles. At times the two party system is fun and challenging, using both characters for solving interesting puzzles, but those are few and far in between. There aren't that many situations where you are separated or where you actually need both characters aside from some scripted sections. That being said, you usually want both characters together because the AI will help you shoot enemies which is really nice. I don't hate the two party system, but they definitely could have done more with it in my opinion. Maybe even just straight up make this game a co-op experience. Both characters are generally with each other, so I don't see why not, plus it would intensify the moments when you are separated. The thing that bugged me the absolute most, which I've never had any major issues with up to this point with any of the other Resident Evil games that I've played, was the item management. They added a new item drop feature so you can put down items and not lose them, which is super duper nice. But they took away the item box! But Sky, you got two characters, that's double the inventory space. Yeah, and you're right, and that made no difference. There are lots of items which is helpful, but I have nowhere to put them except drop them on the floor. But the caveat is, there is a limit to how many items you can drop in one room. So I would need to run into another room and drop off a turd just to run back into the next room and grab an item that I need. And when you go to a new area of the game, if you want to bring those items with you, you have to make several trips, and you guessed it, just drop them on the floor. I had trouble at times picking up items for who knows what reason. You can't stand on the item, you have to stand just the right distance away from it, plus I had so much shit on the ground that I would end up grabbing the wrong item several times. Ink ribbons are still here, which blow even more ass in this one because of all the stupid mechanics surrounding the items that I just bitched about. You have to drop something on the ground, pick up the ink ribbons, save, then drop those on the ground. 
it's just silly to me for a game series that has item managing and organizing as a big role think it's a good idea to take out the storage box and replace it with just throw shit on the floor. Why? The ender chest idea was so good. I pretty much gave up on inventory managing and I just looked at the map. It told me if something was a key item or not. Unless it was ammo or a key item, I left it behind. A nice thing they added is you can interact with an herb or healing item without picking it up and adding it into your inventory. They got that right, and being able to drop items and not have them disappear is great, but they dropped the ball when it came to actual item managing. Is this a dumb thing to complain about? Am I just being petty? I don't know. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. The puzzles were the highlight for me in this title. There's just something about solving a more intricate puzzle that is so rewarding and makes you feel like not an idiot. Some puzzles were pretty challenging, but were very doable as long as you pick up and read the files that the devs left throughout for you. It's a puzzle game for me more so than a survival horror. Resident Evil Zero isn't really that scary, not to mention that the bosses are all kind of a letdown. Just big versions of animals or bugs. The shooting slash combat in this one is rough at times, solely because of the damn little monkeys that you have to fight. These little bastards are fast and hard to freaking hit because they are so small and aiming in classic Resident Evil titles is a bitch as it is. Remember the assholes that played only f***ing odd job in Goldeneye? First off, if that was you, f*** you. Now imagine that, except aiming is slow, you can't move, and there are two or three little blowjobs running around smacking you. Oh, and the leechmen, they suck too. They are fast and they whip the shit out of you. Yeah, combat just wasn't enjoyable at times. One thing that this game did that I don't think has happened before was putting a monster in a safe room. But they did it in this one, and guess f***ing what? It was a goddamn monkey. Not only did they take safe out of safe room, they put the most annoying enemy in it. The story is really weird. All you need to know is that leeches that have the T-virus in them turn people into zombies, can resurrect the dead, and shapeshift. I'm not kidding. This is in the story. Rebecca and Billy go on wacky adventures and have some pretty powerful moments together. Then, at the end of the game, Billy gives Rebecca the most awkward gamer thumbs up I've ever seen. Now that's on brand for the series. Overall, Resident Evil Zero isn't a terrible game, but it had some terrible moments and mechanic mishaps. The story wasn't very compelling, but had some rewarding moments. Some of the enemies you fight shouldn't be in this game because they aren't conducive to the slow-paced fighting mechanics. The item management system is bad and I don't like it. But the saving grace of Resident Evil Zero, for me anyway, was the puzzle solving and the level design. Putting your gamer brain to the test and connecting all the dots is very rewarding and addicting, giving you a shot of dopamine when you figure out a puzzle. Should you play this game? If you like the Resident Evil series and puzzle games, then sure, you might like this one. But if you really like Resident Evil, maybe don't, because you might get sad. And that is why everyone hates Resident Evil Zero. Dick, you tased me! Have a look. You cut my hair? And it looks good. Now are you ready for the product? That's not gel, that's lube. <laughs> Strawberry flavor. No God, please, no, no! What the f was that for? To make you good again, I had to destroy the thing that was making you evil. <laughs> that didn't work.